The tidal Thames is a busy urban estuary acting as an important corridor for transport of goods and people. Recreational and commercial boating, development and well-being, but it is also London's biggest wilderness and home to a fantastic array of wildlife. Estuaries like the Tidal Thames are often overlooked as they are difficult to study and heavily modified. However, they are important ecosystems, especially in their role as nursery grounds for juvenile fish. The Zoological Society of London has been committed to conserving wildlife in the Tidal Thames and its tributaries for over 12 years, with a focus on ensuring clean water, protecting wildlife and connecting people with London's rivers. Through partnership working and citizen science, we will help ensure that the Tidal Thames is internationally hailed as a successful example of wildlife conservation in a busy urban estuary. The Tidal Thames is home to a variety of marine mammals, some of which often take people by surprise. For example, there is not one, but two species of seal, the grey and the harbour seal. For the past three years, ZSL has been conducting annual population counts of these seals using land, boat and aerial transects. This information is sent to partners across the region and to the Special Committee on Seals to better understand and conserve seals in the southeast of England. So it's really important to um, monitor the, the marine mammal population, both using the public sightings to understand whereabouts they are, but also with our annual population survey so we can get a better understanding of how many animals there are. And with these two elements we can then look at changes over the different years and also areas which are more important to the, them than other areas of the estuary. Public sightings are equally important to this survey work and ZSL has created an interactive map to enable people to easily record their sightings. Please do let us know about your marine mammal sightings at zsl.org slash in the Thames. It's absolutely vital for our conservation work, so we really rely on these public sightings to better understand marine mammal distribution in the Thames estuary. And we can use that information to better conserve and manage the marine mammal population in what is a really busy urban estuary which has a number of users, but is also an important ecosystem and habitat. Marine mammals are top predators, which feed on a variety of fish species. Their presence in central London is an indicator of a healthy fish population within the tidal Thames. I've always lived near the Thames or its tributaries and it's always been a, a place I've enjoyed being around. But it's something that I've never really been aware of, of its role as a sort of, as a wildlife habitat. But it wasn't really until I got involved with the eel monitoring scheme initially and then through that came onto the smelt fry that I sort of realised what an important habitat the Thames is for London and actually it's its largest habitat. The Tidal Thames is an important nursery area for a whole range of fish species that are of conservation and ecological importance. ZSL is completing survey work to better understand the abundance and movement of juvenile fish populations as well as developing a long-term monitoring method to see changes over time. What we've done is we trained 65 volunteers uh, to monitor at nine sites along the estuary through the city behind me and they worked in tandem. Once a week they were out and they were monitoring at the same time that ZSL staff were using a plankton net and a seine net to sample. The citizen scientists were sampling with a kick net, so from the margins of the river, from the foreshore in the shallows, and they were also sweep netting. And together Working in tandem, we were able to really explore what's going on in terms of fish ecology in this section of the river. It's given us a fantastic snapshot of what's been going on. The European smelt is a small predatory fish which has suffered large declines across the UK since the early 19th century. Improvements to water quality have allowed some smelt populations to return to estuaries in the UK. They are a sensitive species, so their presence in the tidal Thames suggests that it is able to support a wide range of fish species. ZSL completed ichthyoplankton netting during March and April to identify the smelt spawning location in the tidal Thames. This involves trawling a very fine net just below the water's surface so that we can catch smelt hatchlings. Sign netting is also completed throughout the summer to better understand juvenile fish movement. The net is cast from a boat and we use the tide for it to create a U-shaped net curtain. 
As we pull the net towards the shore, we capture all the fish encircled. We then count, measure and identify these juvenile fish. This work has been important, not only for the tidal Thames, but across the UK, as estuaries are one of the most understudied ecosystems. The data collected during the smelt study has been used to develop a guidance document to conserve tidal Thames fish through the planning process. The Thames is a very modified river, but we need to ensure it can continue to support wildlife by modifying developments to improve habitats for fish, such as finding ways to allow fish migration. So the European eel is a really kind of fascinating and uh, enigmatic species, but there have been really serious declines in the population levels, um, and particularly in what's called the recruitment of the young eels, so the number of uh, juvenile eels, the glass eels and yellow eels. These reductions that we're seeing are unfortunately showing declines of between 90 and, and, and even up to 99% of the levels pre the 1980s. Uh, and these trends are what's, what's led to the European eel being classified under the IUCN red list categories as critically endangered. Since 2011 we expanded the programme to include citizen science monitoring, so uh, using the support of volunteers from the public uh, we're able now to, to study. We have 13 sites this year, 11 of which are, are monitored regularly by citizen scientists. Volunteers are, are just an incredible opportunity for projects like this where they're quite uh, resource intensive in, to, in terms of the amount of uh, time that it takes to, to regularly check the, the traps and to carry out the, the measurements and the counting of eels. And with the support of um, citizen scientists who are able to check sites near to where they live, uh, we're, we've been able to massively scale up, scale up our, our monitoring programme. So from originally um, four sites to now 13 sites, and it gives us a much better view of what's happening across the Thames catchment. It is important that we open up freshwater habitat for the European eel, but this habitat needs to be healthy enough for fish and other wildlife to live. Runoff from roads, pollution spills and waste from misconnected drains are just a few of the many issues impacting the health of our precious urban rivers. ZSL's London Rivers Project, a community-based river stewardship project which brings together local organisations, trained citizen science volunteers and the Environment Agency, was launched in 2014 to help tackle these issues. The backbone of the project is the River Monitoring Initiative. First developed by the Riverfly Partnership, this is a citizen science methodology that uses invertebrate monitoring to gauge the health of rivers and detecting pollution events. The sampling method is based on long established principles of water quality monitoring, in which families of river invertebrates are allocated scores according to their sensitivity to pollution. When pollution enters a river, the highest scoring invertebrates are the first to be lost and the average score falls. Samples that score below a threshold are reported to the Environment Agency as a pollution event. This method has been successful as an early alarm call for pollution events in the capital's rivers. ZSL continues to recruit and train volunteers to this scheme every year. Building on the success of the River Monitoring Initiative, ZSL with our Citizen Crane Partners have recently launched the Outfall Safari, a method for mapping sources of pollution across entire river catchments. Volunteers use a mobile app to systematically map and record the impact of land drains or surface water outfalls, many of which deliver pollution via misconnected plumbing into rivers. An estimated 3% of London's houses are misconnected, so this is a huge urban pollution problem affecting the health of our aquatic wildlife. This work of volunteers feeds through to the river catchment partnerships, statutory agencies and Thames Water to help prioritise investment into stopping pollution at source and bringing our rivers back to better health. Well, um, I'm a local resident and um, I've noticed that there was some pollution in the river and I'm quite interested to find out kind of the water quality um, and I'm also a biologist by background so I kind of wanted to understand more about the ecology, kind of what we can do to improve the quality of the river around here. We kind of almost take it for granted just having this river flowing through this park and I hadn't kind of really thought about whether it was polluted or not so I thought you know this would be a good opportunity to kind of learn a bit more about it and do a bit of uh, just looking at what's living in the river. So the benefits of working with citizen scientists are many. We've Since we started our citizen science programme back in 2011 we've trained over 600 people to join us to work alongside ZSL 
uh, conservation biologists. And by doing so, we've built capacity uh, in London to uh, conserve our aquatic environments. Uh, we've learned a great deal about them. So for instance, on the smelt project which we're here with today, uh, we've learned a great deal about the ecology of fishes in the tidal Thames. We've shared that knowledge with all these people that we're training and we're working with. Uh, so there are many benefits. I live locally. Um, I got involved in a number of projects around the River Crane, Duke of Northumberland River, um, doing invertebrate counting, um, environment management works, eel counting, um, etc. Um, and I think it's important, and the reason I got involved was to try and protect the environment locally as a legacy for my children and their grandchildren. I'd really like to kind of set up a local group. Um, I live quite close to this park, so it'd be great to, to do something here and to monitor it regularly. Because I did a marine degree back home, and I wanted to be involved again. So why not in the River Thames? We live here, we live in London. I would like to know more about where I live. I enjoyed my degree, and because I'm living in London, I want to get myself actively involved as much as I can with survey work and marine life especially. We got really close as a team, we hung up outside of work, outside of the volunteering as well, and the mystery surrounded project, like every day you never knew what you'd catch, it was really exciting. For me it's just been, um, like I said, a learning curve, learning about all the different sides of the ecology in the Thames and not just about the smelt but about all the other species that we um, found during the survey, so it's been really, really interesting for me. I think it's very important. I mean, uh, we're all affected by the environment and I've learned over the last 25 years that volunteers can make a difference. Just, just ordinary people giving their time for free makes a world of difference, so I'm happy to do it. Our work would not be possible without the amazing network of volunteer citizen scientists, all of the partners we work with in the Thames region and the generous funders of our projects. We would like to thank everyone involved in ZSL's conservation projects in the tidal Thames for their hard work protecting London's wildlife. Further details can be found at zsl.org slash Thames. We have many opportunities for volunteers to help ZSL's conservation work throughout the year. If you would like to volunteer as a citizen scientist, please email marineandfreshwater at zsl.org.